Hey hey people, Seth here. Before this video, I made one about a certain artist, but turns out his b**** were smaller than his tiny arms and he copyright striked it. And if you haven't seen that one yet, you get two videos now instead of one. Fellas, the time has come for the other DG. Death Grips is absolutely f phenomenal they've constantly been in the playlist for the past few years and somehow always stays fresh in the ears one of my best friends linked me death grips and much like most of you while hearing them for the first time i told him the f is this bro few months later we were walking in the street with hacker playing on the bluetooth speaker walking down the street with mc ride yelling out teaching bitches how to swim made that street like chernobyl for hoes uninhabitable for the next few thousand years <laughs> Death Grip sounds like living in an apartment in a big city, trying to get one of the pens out of your drawer and then like the pens all fall over and then someone in your house yells out WHAT'S GOING ON OVER THERE? They feature three members, MC Ride, the angry black guy, Zach Hill, the best drummer in the world and Katy Perry enthusiast and Andy Morin, the secret KGB spy infiltrating America as a producer of Death Grips. People think that their first album or EP was ex-military, eh. the same day they formed a band they made their first song ever, Full Moon Death Classic, which released on March 8th, 2011, alongside a video and an EP named Death Grips. Even their first EP was pretty aggressive, doesn't even compare to anything that would come afterwards, but it was pretty listenable. Don't get me wrong, you can, you still can't play the Death Grips EP in front of anyone without the classic. Okay, I know you wanted to play Tame Impala, but I want you to listen to something. Okay. <laughs> This EP is pretty legendary and for some reason, even the people who have all the Death Grips members dick sizes remembered in centimeters don't know about the existence of it. It features Deadass, Death Grips most upbeat track to date, Face Melter, where MC Ride keeps the yelling down to a minimum. Their first track ever made, Tachyon, which is one of their most popular songs, sampling a stove for the hi-hats and the self-titled track, which is extremely good. This EP really shows what Death Grips was about, paranoid schizophrenic lyrics and, and distorted instrumentals. The instrumentals aren't nearly as distorted as whatever the fuck they would do afterwards, but for 2011, this was like curb stomping a grandma. You thought they would stop right there? You naive fucking fuck? 48 days later, they dropped the best album of all time. He, he comes to me with money, money in his hand, he, he offered, offered me, I didn't ask him. him. I, I was knocking, knocking someone's door down, down. I, was I was running, running from, from that. that. When, when I, I got, got out, out, I was in there. Just like that, ex military's first track, Beware, opens up. While Charles Manson is saying that, you can see the wild MC ride running in the desert and a bunch of random clips in true Death Grips fashion. And the song Beware sums up basically what this album is about. Abandoning humanity and giving into the anger and frustration in your mind. Becoming a monster among men. The cum among the socks. With the themes being sacrifice, satanism, violence, intolerance, greed, rage and witchcraft. So like all the good things and basically whatever you imagine you'd be like if you went to live in a forest alone with no technology and no hoes. This album fucks you up so much you go from liking every part of guillotine except the ending where it sounds like vinyl scratching with Ride yelling over it to only liking the vinyl scratching part. Some notorious parts from this mixtape is Beware of course, Guillotine, the David Bowie sample on Culture Shock. Oh my god they're so cool they sampled the David Bowie. Yes they are but let's look at some of their other samples. But Gatsu, what is the album you showed with the BDSM cover art? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, kid. You see, the album is called The Money Store, and it is the best album of all time. It was released almost a year after Ex Military and is widely regarded as their best work. To be honest, hearing this man telling me that he's in my area, he knows my area code, when I come out, my shit will be gone, and he's also teaching bitches how to swim all in one song is an experience that other artists can't compare to. Needless to say, The Money Store is an absolute banger. It's probably their best work to date and I don't even know what to say about it. It's like crumb stomping a grandma, like stealing a TV from your aunt. Just 
telling a dude coming out the synagogue what's with the funny hat. Just basically being a menace. And the absolute bangers this album features is unmatched. The how these Sacramento motherfuckers were able to fit this many bangers into one album is beyond me. Out of these 13 songs, 6 of them are 10 out of 10 and the rest of them are just extremely good. The money store is like pretty entry level listenable shit still. It's not gamers on the moon or anything, but if you got the ox and played some of the money store songs, you'd get a better reaction than you started off with ha ha ha. Also, Death Grips music can be used for three things. One, mental breakdowns. Two, when you want the girls to leave the place you're at. And working out. The working out potential of Death Grips is not spoken about, while most people out here work out with some pussy shit like techno and get those pussy ass pumps where you can still move after working out. We men don't do that over here. Heartbroken? Good. Girlfriend left you? Good. Lost your job? Good. Get to the fucking dumbbells and start blasting no love or you might think he loves you. FULL VOLUME and we'll see how good you feel afterwards. Unironically, back in my heartbroken fat days, I started doing cardio. You know what I did? Went out to the fucking highway, put in the earphones, put on no love and fucking sprinted. You're planning for a jog, you go fucking sprinting. 20 push-ups right fucking now! I don't wanna hear any pussy shit about eh, I'm not motivated. Do you think I am motivated every day, every single day to lift these dumbbells and drink protein shakes like a fucking boar? My shoulders are half a meter wide. The only problem I have is I'm still able to fit through some doors. Money store is a 10 out of 10. But you know how I mentioned the song No Love? Well, that's actually not in the money store. It's from the next album, No Love Deep Web, which features a penis in the bathroom stall with the words No Love Deep Web written on it with a sharpie. This is the album cover released to the normies but you can also find it uncensored if you just google it. No Love Deep Web is probably the heaviest Death Grips album out there. There are their other albums which are much louder generally but No Love Deep Web is just pure fucking bass, anger and schizo rambling. Just fuck, I love to see man. Guys there is just no other way to put it. No Love Deep Web is fucking phenomenal. This album is probably the one that speaks to me personally the most. It's none of that melodic kind of shit. Just you, the black man yelling in your Year and Zach Kill going fucking crazy on the drums. The three musketeers have said that quote unquote it's striking us as the closest we've gotten to what our initial vision of what Death Grips would sound like. It's so raw you feel like you're fucking some chick with herpes you just met at a bar, no protection and completely sober and you like you know that she has herpes. The absolute highlight of this album is 100% the song No Love which has fueled my workouts for the past 4 years. The raw bass and the hardcore drums is not comparable to anything. The boys are even nice enough to slow the song down and go less hard on the drums in one part to give you a rest right before throwing into the pits of hell once again. The No Love music video gives off the exact same vibe as the song has, chaos in the brain. As Tyler the creator said, the skinny black guy on stage with the beard that kind of reminds you of one of those homeless people you see with a Starbucks cup ended up being the coolest shit I've ever seen. I put on the ex-military mixtape and Lionel and I put together a full trampoline in 17 minutes. That's when I realized that Death Grips was my meth. I put that on and I can do anything and do it efficient as fuck. With that being said, do not listen to Death Grips while driving a fast car with your power mechanics button on and your tire traction off. Nico, Travis and I legit almost died because I decided to put on Stockton and burn rubber at a red light, which resulted into my car spitting out down a street at 60-70 miles an hour at an interest section in Los Angeles, around 2.45 on a school day. Not one scratch, no one hurt, not one car touched, I don't know what it was but it led me to believe I had a grip on death. Favorite song Hustle Bones. No Love Deep Web, 10 out of 10. Government Plates opens up with what I imagine the inside of Elliot Rogers' mind looked like and how my 25 year old Russian date probably felt like when she found out I was 5 years younger than her. Death Grips dropped the music video for the first track of the album where MC Ride shows off his acting skills by showing us every single human emotion possible in a span of 3 minutes. The track itself is one of my favorites by Death Grips. It's one of their heaviest and most ferocious 
ferocious songs. <clears throat> you might think he loves you for your money, but I know what he really loves you for. It's your brand new leopard skin pillbox hat. And in his lyrics, MC Wright keeps outing himself. For example, in this song, he describes himself as a murderous, sexually deviant, demon-esque figure. The song Birds was also in this album where the guitar was played by Robert Pattinson. It's a very, very pretty song, which is like what the fuck when you know who you're listening to. And it feels like they were experimenting a lot more with synths and different sounds in this album. And Government Plates is generally a pretty chill album compared to the rest, excluding the first song, You Can't Compare Birds and Giving Bad People Good Ideas. The Powers That Be is a double album, which means it's 80 plus minutes of schizophrenia. I'm not even going to bullshit you, I haven't listened to this album fully because handling death grips for 80 minutes straight will change something in you. And personally, I don't want to be yelling in the street. The first one is called Gamers on the Moon, where every track includes a sample of Bjork and Jenny Death. The highlights are definitely Up My Sleeves, On GP and Have a Satcom BB. On GP is probably the most emotional death grip song where the emotion is not curb stomping grandmas. Why? Don't let me spoil this shit for you and go listen to it for yourself. They even included a music video. What the fuck? On the album Bottomless Pit, the boys decided to go for their childhood dreams of being a real estate agent and also go for that dream of dropping the weirdest shit they've ever done. Like I can pick out a song from any Death Grips album that I can play around my friends and they would only turn it off after 2 minutes. This shit is not even gonna last 5 seconds. It does have bangers though as always. And you know what viewer, if you thought we'd end all this shit with tongues and mouths, fuck you. Year of the Snitch picks up right where Bottomless Pit left off. Glory Hole Tongue Mouth Album Cover. Year of the Snitch was extremely weird, it felt extremely tame compared to their other work, but also weirdly experimental. It's kinda weird and I don't have any real favorites from this album. Uh, go on! Type that comment. See how you feel when I pull up. Gmail and the restraining orders <laughs> is, the, is the latest thing they dropped. And I'll just let the YouTube comments do my work. This sounds like a drum solo, but every time the snare is hit, a random death grip sample is played. This sounds like what an AI would generate if it was forced to listen to the entire death grips discography. This is what death grips sounds like to people who don't listen to death grips. I've never felt silence more than I, when I <laughs> I've never felt silence more than when I paused this. Can you really hear the Jimi Hendrix influence? I'm not going to go through every EP because the video is already pretty long and my viewers will kill me if I don't drop a new vid soon enough and my video editor will kill himself once he sees how much he has to edit and the video editor is also coincidentally me. I was in a Death Grips Facebook group before I became a monkey and decided to deactivate all my personal social media. There people used to post Death Grips memes, e-girls used to post selfies and then death grips went on tour. Suddenly this group turned from memes and selfies to guys don't go to the concert without wearing earplugs. I was there and I literally can't hear now. The doctor told me it's gonna come back in a few days. Yeah bro I was at that concert and I couldn't hear for the next few days because the bass was so loud. And the one comment I remember very much quote unquote I was at the back of the concert and saw people at the front running out during no love because it was so loud. Not a Travis Scott concert definitely but please wear earplugs anytime you go to a DG concert so you can still listen to your sissy hypno when you get home. Their each live show is probably an everlasting memory. You never see artists go out this much when they're performing live. MC Wright has a mental breakdown every time and gets extremely sweaty. Zach Hill bleeds from going hard on the drums and Andy loves his job. <laughs> Death Grips was formed in the only place in the world where being insane is the logical thing to do. Sacramento, California on December 21, 2010. As MC Wright said in an interview, Sacramento is a slow but watch your back kind of town stuck inside the downward spiral of a never ending Twin Peaks trip. Last week someone decided to call it quits on the train tracks and their decapitated head was found close by, behind a locally owned venue. Just this morning, Zach was approached by a kid in his early 20s who double fisted with 12 inch kitchen knives held in plain sight like they were two bananas asked if he had any money. There are a few bands I like and respect very much here but I do not follow the local music scene. Like many things for the most part I think it sucks. Played out, lazy, lacks feeling, no one sounds like us. Death Grips is the pulse of the individual and that exists only within itself. The group was formed by Zach Hill who used to be a drummer for a math rock group 
Hella, and his next door neighbor, the art student MC Ride. MC Ride used to work at Pasano's Midtown as well as Pushkin's Bakery in Sacramento and pursued a career as a painter. Seeing as none of those are very good career choices, unless as a painter you're drawing fully porn, Death Grips was probably the best choice. Ride began his music career using the name Muxel Pilks with his brother Swank Daddy forming a group called Fire. Swank Daddy sounds like a mix of Death Grips and Viper, the two menaces to the music industry. <laughs> Get a new boy, sign the body, special price, pork wine and do whatever you can like. Kick it, burn it, break it down for creation. It's what you make it if you take it to replace it. And also looks a lot like his brother Ride. Ride and his old music was extremely quiet. It literally doesn't make any sense how he went from being the quietest rapper to the one who is known for blowing eardrums out at concerts. Men have tried but never found an answer lies beyond the sounds and sights you take for granted while they try and wake you up with style. Soon enough, Zack brought his friend Andy into the group and that's how the band was formed. After ex-military's release and the critical acclaim it got them, they signed with Epic Records and quickly released The Money Store afterwards, to which Anthony Fantano gave a 10 out of 10. Because of the rarity of their rating by him, it meant a lot to his fans and drove a lot of traffic to DG. Then this conversation happened with their label. We wanna drop the No Love album pretty soon. Well. We wanna drop it in 2013 instead of 2012, so fuck you, no, fuck you. And they leaked their own album on their website on October 1st, 2012. After government plates and uh, gamers on the moon, Death Grips decided they were at their best already and decided to break up. So they wrote their breakup note on a napkin. But as you know, they re-emerged around six months later, dropping the instrumental album Fashion Week and around two months later, the second part of the powers that be, Jenny Death. So yeah, they said fuck the breakup. Surprise Surprisingly, MC Wright sounds a lot more human in interviews than he does in his music. I'm not that fascinated by uh, human achievements. David Bowie's last album Black Star was also inspired by Death Grips, so he was very noited up to the end. Knowing that fact, you realize that Death Grips is a phenomenal group and none of the virginity masters, including me, can wait until we see what they have in the store after the last album. Feel free to visit their live shows if uh, they appear anywhere near you, but be sure to wear ear protectors so you can at least hear your own thoughts the day after. I want to thank all the patron OGs for supporting the shit post and wish you all a very happy holiday. Hold on, should I fucking cover Havana Gila on this? Thank you for supporting Walter White, Louis Lingard, 7777, Audrey Payotet, <coughs> Payotet, Ari, Ari Nien, who is Ethan, Angel, Kaya Kaya, Lightly Shat Pant, Ivelinat Anasova, Despacitek, Chax, Pineapple Activist, Christoph Naf, 12 Zoloft, Denkin, Coulthard, Moshi, Ewan, Ewan Triple Four, Valerium, Musty the Puzzy, Cloudy, Mar, Deadfather, DG Roland, Silo, Asuza, and Carter. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and goodbye.